The Lethal Company Ice Cube Similar to an iceberg, this video will delve into various levels of lethal company knowledge, ranging from widely known facts to obscure or even absurd entries. However, since Lethal Company is a brand new title and is still being updated, the game doesn't have enough trivia or secrets to warrant a massive video on it. So instead, I'm making a smaller iceberg, or an ice cube, that can easily be expanded upon once more lore and updates enter the game. Much like everyone else, I've been having such a a blast playing Lethal Company with my friends. Oh, open it. Oh shit, yeah. A robot. Oh god, John, leave! Oh, god. It is such a fantastic game. So much so that I really wanted to create a video that not only explores the game's deepest secrets and mysteries, at the time of me recording this of course, but also helps newcomers learn the basics and lore. So whether you're a veteran Lethal Company player, a newcomer, or a person stuck in traffic looking for something interesting to listen to, if you find this video appealing, please leave a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you're interested in more content like this. But without further ado, let's get started. Zekers. Zekers is the 21-year-old creator and developer of Lethal Company as well as games like The Upturned, It Steals, Welcome to the Dark Place, Dead Cedar, Take Your Wish, Drive Home, and Too Many Asteroids. Not much is really known about Zekers, however, they do have a Twitter, a Patreon, and a YouTube channel in case any of you guys would like to follow them and keep up with their work. Not just for Lethal Company, but for other projects as well. The Company the company is pretty shrouded in mystery, but what's known is that it employs individuals to gather scrap from deserted moons and selling it at the front desk of the company building, situated on the moon, 71 Gordion. When the scrap is deposited and the bell is rung, a colossal tentacle arm retrieves it. But here's the catch. The excessive bell ringing pisses the arm off, leading it to obliterate anyone nearby. The employee's main objective is to collect as much scrap as possible from these deserted moons in order to reach a quota, and according to the owner's manual found within the ship and the loading screen of Lethal Company itself, it appears that the company is called Halden Electronics. At least that's what I think. Scrap Scrap is literally any object able to be picked up on moons and sold at the company building. You know, scrap can be anything from an air horn to bottles, mugs, engines, old phones, and even apparatuses. Terminal. The terminal housed within the ship serves as a crucial tool in the game. It empowers players to choose destinations, monitor various aspects, purchase supplies for enhancing the journey, or adorning the ship's interior. Additionally, the terminal offers valuable insights about creatures, moons, and other relevant details. Moons. The moons within the game serve as destinations for players to gather scrap, yet they could also pose risks if players aren't careful. Each moon features a different difficulty level and varying weather conditions. The moons are named 41 Experimentation, 220 Assurance, 56 Vow, 21 Offense, 61 March, 85 Rend, 7 Dine, 8 Titan, and 71 Gordion, where the company building is situated. Experimentation, Assurance, and Vow are categorized as easy, while Offense and March are considered intermediate. On the other hand, Rand, Dine, and Titan are classified as hard. Initially, players have access to the first six moons, Experimentation, Assurance, Vow, Offense, March, and the company building, of course, without any cost. However, Rend, Dine, and Titan can only be visited after meeting the first quota and selling scrap to the company. These three moons pose greater difficulty but offer more valuable scrap. Although, after seeing this clip from Titan by a Reddit user named XXBlackeryXX, I would just avoid the latter moons altogether unless you have the balls to tango with this complete nonsense on screen. Now, for the record, I don't know if this clip is actually from Titan or not, but I, I think either way, it's still pretty funny. And it does a great job at summarizing how tough these moons can be. Bestiary. Bestiaries encompass the array of monsters or entities encountered by players within or outside the buildings across the moons. While most entities are perilous, some can be managed effectively if dealt with appropriately. A few entities succumb to a shovel attack or can be stung using stun grenades or the zap gun. These monsters are categorized into three groups, indoor entities, outdoor entities, and daytime entities. Indoor entities roam maps like the facility and the mansion, while outdoor entities are typically typically encountered at night or during eclipses. Daytime entities are visible outdoors throughout the day regardless of time. The indoor entities consist of the Snare Flea, Bunker Spider, Hoarding Bug, Bracken, Thumper, 
Hygro Deer, Spore Lizard, Nutcracker, Coil Head, Jester, The Masks, and The Ghost Girl, although she's a special case to be discussed later in the video. Outdoor entities include the Eyeless Dog, the Forest Keeper, the Earth Leviathan, and the Baboon Hawk, and daytime entities comprise of the Circuit Bee, the Manticoil, and the Roaming Locust. Weather Weather conditions play a crucial role in Lethal Company. When consulting the moon's page via the terminal, players can view the current weather conditions for each moon. Rainy weather creates dark patches of quicksand on the ground, posing a threat to players. Stormy weather makes transporting metal objects risky due to lightning strikes, potentially eliminating the player. Then there's foggy weather, which sucks so much ass. I, I cannot stand foggy weather in this game. I swear to God, I can't see anything. There's three kinds of foggy weather. There's light fog, there's heavy fog, and there's stink clouds. Light fog is pretty manageable unless forest keepers inhabit that moon. And then there's heavy fog, which severely limits visibility, rendering navigation nearly impossible. And it just makes the game very frustrating. And then there's stink clouds, which are caused by forest keepers consuming players, resembling heavy fog, but are green. And those clouds induce coughing, reduce stamina, and inflict damage. Unfortunately, the terminal doesn't identify the type of fog on a moon. And then there's flooded conditions, which makes traversing the moon increasingly difficult and basically impossible beyond a certain point. And lastly, we have eclipses, which should totally just be avoided altogether as they cause immediate spawns of outdoor creatures. And well, it's just insane. Try to avoid eclipses. Or don't, I'm not a cop. Traps. Currently, there are three types of traps located on moons, turrets, landmines, and steam leaks. Now, steam leaks occur inside of facilities. They basically cloud up corridors, and the only way to stop them is for players to find a valve close by to stop the leak. Turrets and landmines, on the other hand, are, are everywhere, and they suck, especially when you accidentally run over a landmine and kill your entire squad, which has happened to me before, and it was very funny. Except when I got back to the ship, and then my friend spawned in again and started yelling at me. <laughs> Mods. Lethal Company receives mod support through R2 Modman, a program used to manage mods for tons of games via the Thunderstore. Developed by EBKR, PC users can easily download and utilize this program to access an extensive array of mods for Lethal Company. These mods vary widely, offering options to adjust the game's difficulty, introduce new content such as skins inspired by anime characters, provide extra in-game items, modify entity appearances, include additional emotes, and so much more. Delivery System When players order supplies through the terminal store and it's delivered to a moon, a small rocket brings the supplies. And yes, if someone stands under the landing rocket, they will be crushed. Trust me. Also, during an eclipse, eyeless dogs nearby could hear the supply drop. So just keep that in mind. During the holiday season, the delivery rocket received a little cosmetic upgrade, adorned with a star and some lights, which looks pretty cool. Turkey in the Straw The tune played from a supply drop order in the game is called Turkey in a Straw, which is a folk song commonly associated with ice cream trucks. Ghost Girl The Ghost Girl is the rarest entity in the game, briefly mentioned earlier in the bestiary entry of this iceberg. <coughs> Sorry, Ice Cube. According to the Myrahees wiki, the Ghost Girl, when spawned in, checks every player's insanity level and total turn amount. The player with the highest number of these two statistics will most likely be haunted in the game. So, players should stick to the group and avoid looking behind them to keep these numbers low. A player holding an item worth more than 150 scrap increases the chances of being haunted, as well as being critically injured. If a player suspects that they're being haunted by this freaky little thing, they should look for indicators like whispering, giggling, heavy breathing, heartbeat, or distorted audio, as these are all signs that a player is being followed. Keep backs against a wall to avoid looking at her as well, because once the ghost girl enters attack mode, it's all over. The ghost girl will follow their victims, even outside of facilities, and if the ghost girl manages to slay their prey, they will cycle through the rest of the crew until everyone is dead. There are other ways to avoid the ghost girl listed on the Myrahees wiki, which I recommend checking out as the wiki page goes into greater detail and provides some strategies and tips for dealing with her. Sigurd's Logs Sigurd was a previous employee of the company, whose story is told through his entries found on the terminal after collecting logs around various maps. As of now, there are 12 entries, however, two of them as a version 45 are not obtainable, those logs being Hiding and Desmond. 
To summarize, much of the company's history remains shrouded in mystery, but old logs from Sigurd reveal their existence since at least 1968. On August 22nd of that year, the company hired a crew comprising of Sigurd, Richard, Desmond, and Jess. During Sigurd's stay with the company, he began writing logs in the terminal aboard the crew's ship. As the days and weeks passed, Sigurd started hearing screams emanating from behind the massive wall of the company building whenever the crew visited to sell their scrap. Questioning the company's nature due to these unsettling experiences, Sigurd's suspicions grew, especially after the tragic death of crewmate Richard, who was killed by a bracken a few weeks into the log's entries. Upon reporting Richard's demise to the company, Sigurd encountered the same artificial voice from his phone interview, which offered to send a replacement, being Lucas. By October 3rd of 1968, Desmond encrypted Sigurd's records to keep them hidden. It's unknown if Sigurd or any of the remainder of the crew made it home safe, but I have a strong feeling that they didn't. Masked Masked, masks, or mimics are a pretty interesting enemy type present in Lethal Company. The beast appears as a regular player wearing a comedy tragedy mask, and this beast essentially hunts down other players. The mask spawns two different ways. They could spawn as a natural enemy, or when a player picks up the mask, killing the player and giving control of the body to the mask. If a mask gets in the range of a player, they will grab them and spew blood in their faces before converting them, which is pretty metal. There are tips and extra info about how to overcome the masks on the Myra He's wiki page for this entity. And according to a video posted to the Lethal Company subreddit by user Beezlebub the Dark One, the mask entities can teleport, which is terrifying. Outsold Call of Duty since its release back in October, Lethal Company has been dominating the Steam marketplace, even beating out AAA titans like Call of Duty, which is just incredible to see. And that was the first layer of the ice cube. Oh boy. Arachnophobia Mode Lethal Company has recently became one of several new titles to include an arachnophobia toggle that alters the spider model to make it appear less menacing. The following footage from Twitter user Koyo showcases what spiders now look like once the toggle is switched on. The spider models, instead of appearing as actual spiders, just resemble the word spider, and that's pretty hilarious if you ask me. It also makes the spiders way more visible. The device under the company building. Underneath the main platform of the company building lies a submarine or, or a drill or something entirely different. I've seen articles referring to this device as a submarine, and according to the infamous fandom wiki, it's labeled as a drill. I'm not entirely sure exactly which one is canon, but whatever it is, it's accessible via parkour. If you're looking at the front desk of the company, on the left side there's like a little ladder you can go down, and it takes it down to a platform where you can find one of Sigurd's logs. If you do some parkour jumps, you'll manage to make it to the platform where this device is located. Now according to the wiki, it's theorized to be either the game's future end, although it could literally be something entirely different. It appears to have slots for two apparatuses. My guess is that those apparatuses are used to power this device, and there's no apparent tool either in the game or in the files to reattach it. This device appears to sit on some tracks leading to a wall of the building, with a yellow circle marking what might be a future entry point in the wall. I'm sure in a future update we'll learn way more about this device and what exactly it does. Image of a random city. On each moon, there seems to be a background stock image that remains unseen by most players. However, if a player can find a way to make it up to the top of the skybox and on top of the map, they will be exposed to a 360 degree view of a highway and a cityscape, which is really, really cool. This honestly reminds me of the image of the pigs or sheep that are located on the tutorial mission of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It's a real life image used as a background or a skybox in a video game, and I just think that's pretty unique. Lasso Man Lasso Man is an unfinished bestiary that does not have a proper entry in the terminal. The creature is a humanoid stick figure made of a single coiled red rope, resembling a lasso, and shares a similar AI to that of the Thumper. Right now it's unconfirmed as to whether this creature was ultimately scrapped from the base game entirely or if it'll appear in a future update. However, if you want to see the Lasso Man in-game right now, there is a mod called Brutal Company, which will add in the Lasso Man via an event called Lasso Man is Real. Just to be very careful, careful with Brutal Company, as it's a more threatening version of the game that adds in random moon events, and just overall makes the game a bigger pain in the ass. I'm not knocking the mod or anything, it's a lot of fun. It just makes the game a lot tougher. 
back room's level zero room. In Lethal Company, there's a room which sort of resembles the iconic back room's level zero. It's characterized by yellow walls and a carpet-like floor. I'm not entirely sure if this room is supposed to be an easter egg or if it's supposed to pay homage to the iconic back room's room, but these rooms do look pretty similar so I wouldn't be surprised. Now, for some reason, and this is something I just learned recently, people like to refer to this space as the Bracken Room. There's a giant myth floating around the Lethal Company community about how this room is allegedly the Bracken Bracken's favorite space and will pull any player all the way here and kill them. However, as I just said, it's a myth. My guess is that this myth began because people must have confused the words back room for Bracken room. Anyways, the Bracken will literally pick a random room to drag the players in. This isn't like the room that the Bracken chooses. Shower myth. There's a rumor floating around the internet about how the shower item in game, when used, can reset a person's sanity in order to avoid being haunted by the ghost girl. However, this is just a myth. The shower item doesn't reset a person's sanity. In fact, the shower doesn't do anything as of now. It's just a goofy item to spice up the interior of a ship. Moaning Air Horn there's a pretty popular deep fried sounding moaning girl sound effect. I think it's literally called moaning MLG. I'm not going to play it because YouTube will probably insta age restrict this video. So if you want to just literally look up moaning MLG sound effect, you'll probably find it. But trust me when I say that it's a very loud moan. Anyways, there's an item available in Lethal Company called the air horn. And when a player uses the air horn, it creates a very similar sound, which I will play for you right now. <laughs> Original concept. According to the announcement trailer of Lethal Company and the Myra Hayes wiki, Lethal Company was originally planned to take place indoors with players reaching new factories via an elevator system. And in the trailer itself, you can see this elevator system. The game, however, has been in development for a pretty long time, potentially dating back to way before May 26th of 2022, so it's not surprising that Zeekers changed this concept over the course of the game's development. Although in my personal opinion, I think Zeekers should totally consider reintroducing the elevator system to some facilities. It could be be a cool way for players to explore deeper parts of a facility and maybe the deeper you go in a facility the crazier it gets but the amount of scrap you find is ridiculously high and apparently i'm not the only one that feels this way in fact if you go to the comment section of the lethal company announcement teaser there are lots of people voicing their opinions about the elevator system and how it would be really cool to see it return the real company is across the solar system. As per Sigurd's log nonsense from September 27th, 1968, Desmond tracked a call made shortly after Rich's demise by Sigurd, notifying the crew about a replacement employee. Desmond's investigation revealed that a group impersonating calls from inside the company building were located elsewhere, specifically the opposite side of the solar system. So why would the company not be inside of this building? Well, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Golden Planet. In Sigurd's logs titled Screams and Golden Planet, Sigurd pulled out his walkie-talkie next to the company building and began to hear screams. Eventually, those screams manifested into words from someone inside the wall. A voice told Sigurd that there was a golden planet, and apparently this planet, along with the person and what I'm assuming is more people, maybe this person's crew, were swallowed by a monster and that everything and everyone was currently being digested. The unknown person wasn't aware of where they were until Sigurd informed them that they were located inside a giant building on an ocean world. According to this person, they don't remember what the beast is or what it looks like, but only remembers it eating the planet. But besides that, they forgot everything. As of now, approaching the company building with a walkie-talkie doesn't really activate any screams or secret dialogue, and if I had to guess as to why players can't hear anything, it's probably because the person and or crew inside the belly of the beast from 1968 probably faced a horrible death via digestion. The current setting of this game isn't 1968, in fact it's hundreds of years into the future, so it's only right to assume that all of these people are dead. 121-768-7395 121-768-7395 is a phone number located on a poster hanging on one of the walls of the ship. The poster reads, drone ship experiencing technical difficulties? Call this number from your company issued cell phone. However, this phone number, when called, doesn't redirect a caller to some secret easter egg or anything. As of now, the phone number doesn't work. However, according to TikTok user It's Paul Thomas, allegedly at one point this phone number did work. However, I can't find any audio online from when this number allegedly did work. So take that with a grain of salt. And that was the second layer of the ice cube. Good God.
Mapper Tools. There is a mysterious item in the store called Mapper Tools, which costs 30 credits. This item apparently gives players an overhead view of their surroundings using light detection. However, when purchased in game, the item appears to be just a shovel. It's possible that this item is either still being planned as an addition to the game, or was just scrapped altogether. Jeb. According to the infamous fandom wiki for Lethal Company, the company monster that grabs your stuff, and you if you're not too careful, is labeled as Jeb. Various gaming media outlets and even members of the community have also been referring to this monster as Jeb. However, that's not the official name for this creature. According to some comments under a post on r slash lethal company by a reddit user named Griffin King Bros, a lot of people are under the assumption that Jeb is the name that the community decided to call the monster inside of the company building. However, nobody in the comments has any idea as to where the origin of this name began. It's totally possible that a random streamer or content creator might have referred to this monster as Jeb and the name just stuck. And if that's the case, then I'm not surprised, because this wouldn't be the first time that a community has named a character in a video game. In fact, there was a similar situation way back during the release of the Black Ops 2 Zombies map, Buried. The giant that roams around the map was named Arthur by Treyarch. However, the community kept calling him Leroy for some reason. I guess because, like, Leroy Jenkins was a big meme back in the day. And eventually that name just stuck. I personally have zero issue calling this monster Jeb. In fact, I think the name Jeb or even Jebediah suits the monster quite well. However, this fandom wiki is just a messy site full of spam ads, unverified claims, and complete bullshit. So for anyone looking for lethal company information moving forward, please use the Myra He's wiki. Which I still don't know if I'm even saying right, but according to the wiki itself, there's no real correct pronunciation, so Myra He's wiki it is. The company monster is the boss. I saw some theories posted online from fans speculating about how the company monster is the real boss or CEO of the company, and I just think that's hilarious. Like, what if the inside of the building is just a regular cubicle office, and the CEO is just working at his desk, and part of his job is collecting items at the front window? Oh my god, what if the monster is just wearing a suit? I know none of this is true in the slightest, but I just think it's funny to speculate. The Old Phone Screams if a player stumbles upon the old phone scrap and picks it up, a person screaming can be heard on the other end of the call. Now, here's a question. Who's on the other end of the line? Sigurd used a walkie-talkie when speaking to the unknown person about the Golden Planet and the Beast, and that situation took place a few hundred years prior to the current setting of the game, so is this just a random easter egg that doesn't mean anything, or is it something else? This phone is very common on Rend, Dine, and Titan in case you want to look for it and hear the scream for yourself. It's also possible to run into the item on Vow, Assurance, Offense, and March, but the rates that it spawns in on those moons is pretty low. Story Theories This final entry of this ice cube serves as not just my speculative take on the unfolding narrative of Lethal Company, but also some other fan ideas as well. Now, disclaimer, you do not have to agree with any of these takes on the story, especially since the narrative is still being crafted. There's also always the chance that in three months, this entry will just age like milk. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But I guess that's kind of the whole point of why this Ice Cube series exists. It gives me a chance to talk about something that's pretty new that I'm obsessed with as it's still being developed. So in the future, when development finally ceases or slows down, I can make a much bigger video, like an iceberg, talking about the game and even correcting myself on topics I talked about in this video that have either been updated or were just completely retconned. Also, remember that this game was and still is being developed by a single person. They are probably not as concerned about the story as they are about the gameplay at this current moment. And before we begin, if you have any ideas or theories about this story, drop them in the comments below. According to this Steam user, they believe that the company is keeping an eldritch monster satiated by feeding its scraps so that it doesn't start eating people. The Hopped General believes that humanity began colonizing other planets far away from Earth that should have been left alone and that players are just left repeating what the AI is telling them to do, believing that the company is just long gone. Random Dude believes that humanity is enslaved by an alien race and they're just forcing them to collect scrap because they either need it or they just find it entertaining to watch humans risk their lives. Lint 
stalemate believes that the company and facilities are a scheme designed by the monster inside the company building in order for people to bring it food. Average Jacker believes that the company began in the late 30s or 40s but didn't start collecting scrap until the 50s. The facilities used to be company owned but over time became overrun by monsters and now the company hires people to salvage what's left. There's also some speculation about the current state of Earth. Like Average Jacker thinks that Earth might be on the brink of collapse due to overpopulation or a lack of resources. There happens to be a poster inside of the shop that mentions giving extra food to the company, but maybe there is some type of food shortage. I also want to bring up a really great video created by YouTuber Rem Games titled The Secret War in Lethal Company, which is a video that tries to make sense of everything within the game. According to their ideas, there was a literal war within the Lethal Company universe, which is shown through the construction of bunkers, landmines and turrets placed in bunkers, and moons used for experimentation and weapon development. Halden Electronics invaded these places to scavenge the land for valuable resources to feed their giant monster representative. There's also an entire explanation about memory loss and how the company disposes the useless employees as a means of punishment before wiping their memory and placing them back on the ship as if the characters of Lethal Company are just stuck in some type of loop. It's a great video if you want to delve even deeper into the potential lore. But for me, my personal take is that the company has been in operation since at least before 1968, and space travel has been around for quite some time. Over the last few hundred years, employees have been collecting scrap in order to appease the beast behind the company walls. But how did the company seal off this monster, especially after the rumor that it ate an entire planet? Well, my educated guess is that after the consumption of the golden planet or moon, and I'm gonna assume it's a moon, the beast went into some type of resting or hibernation period and was just relaxed on a much larger ocean moon, aka 71 Gordion, and the company just found it and built a wall around it in order to protect Earth and other galactic colonies nearby. The monster eventually wakes up and the company hires people to continue feeding it random garbage to keep it tame, because if it's not tame, it'll probably break out and create havoc across the universe. As for the reason why the company or management or the people responsible for the automated voice system are on the other side of the solar system, they probably don't want to be anywhere near this beast if it ever escapes the confines of its prison. In terms of the object located under the company building, maybe it's a pod that players will eventually step inside of and be placed in the same room as the beast. And maybe the beast will swallow the player whole and maybe the goal is to kill the monster from the inside out, eliminating it from existence and giving the company a reason to shut down. Or maybe this was a failed operation by Sigurd and his crew to break into the company building to see what's going on on the other side. Sigurd and the crew maybe met their demise and the whole plane was scrapped for hundreds of years. And maybe at some point point our crew, that being you and I, will finish what Sigurd started by breaking into the company building. Again, these are all just theories, opinions, and assumptions. Until any literal Lethal Company story updates appear in the game, it appears as if employees will continue to be prisoners risking their lives to feed a monstrous creature, which is kind of depressing. And until we get more updates, you and I will just be stuck here, continuing to speculate on what the story might be. If there even is one, this could literally just be nothing. Anything is possible right now. And that was the final layer of the Ice Cube. Yeah, that, that's what it's called. Ice Cube. Bonus. Welcome to the puddle of the Ice Cube. The part where everything is wet and nothing makes any sense. So buckle up, baby. My friend owns the Lethal Company hairdryer. Sersha, one of my best friends and Water on Red bandmate, recently messaged me via Discord about how she owns a hairdryer that looks pretty similar to the one found in Lethal Company. Coincidence? I don't think so. I have a Rubik's Cube. A pretty hilarious Lethal Company video was posted to Twitter by a user called Zeke Posting, and in this video, there are three employees who walk into a facility only to be scared out by a thumper. Two members of the group quickly escape while the third is stuck inside. It isn't until a few moments later when the third player emerges from the facility with a Rubik's Cube shouting, I have a Rubik's Cube! <laughs> This is one of the most hilarious Lethal Company clips I've ever seen, so credit to Zeke posting. Goku. My friend Sersha, who I just mentioned previously, has been playing a lot of Lethal Company with her other group of friends, and during her play session, she was using a mod that turns the Bracken into Goku from Dragon Ball. Whenever the Bracken or Goku manages to grab a hold of a player, it'll say, Hey, it's me, Goku! And it's really funny and kind of scary at the same time. Let me take a look at this. Goku! Goku! Oh, no. Jesus Christ confirmed. 
If you go to the terminal, search bestiary, and then type in Jesus Christ info, you will be prompted with a statement that reads, no data has been collected on this creature, a scan is required, which confirms that Jesus Christ is canon in Lethal Company, <laughs> and it's the stupidest entry I think I've ever placed at the bottom of any iceberg or ice cube in the history of me making videos like this. The real Lethal Company are the friends we made along the way. Get the hell out of here. And that was the puddle of the ice cube. I'm not gonna get a mop. Well guys, that was the Lethal Company Ice Cube. Hopefully you guys learned something new or enjoyed this little Iceberg spin-off series. If you did, then please leave a like on the video and let me know in the comments below if you want more videos like this. And maybe in the future, as long as development continues, I can make an updated version of this Lethal Company Ice Cube and dive into deeper details about the lore, the story, and other random obscure topics. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new around here. Click the bell icon to be notified on whenever I upload a brand new video. Follow me on all of my social links and join my Discord server. Links in the bio below. Have a fantastic day everyone, but please remember to meet the quota. Otherwise, you're getting sucked out of the ship and you're going to die.